Hello everyone, welcome back. And in today's video, we will solve a problem from INPHO 2019. And this problem is related to the topic of fluid statics. So let's start with the problem statement. So we have a long narrow cylinder whose cross section area is A and it is filled with a compressible liquid up to a height H to B and the density of the fluid varies as this particular function. So here P0 and rho naught are constants and the depth Z is measured from the free surface of the liquid where the pressure is equal to P atm. Okay, now uh, remember one thing guys, P0 is not the same as P atm by the way. Yeah, so the pressure over here is P atm. P0 is just some constant, okay? Okay, so in the first question, we have to find the pressure as a function of Z and the mass of the fluid as a function of Z. Okay guys, so this is the free surface of the fluid and uh, we what we're doing is going a depth Z below the free surface and taking a small uh, element of the fluid of width dz. The reason we are doing this is because we can almost consider the density to be constant for this small element. Okay, so now let's assume the pressure uh, due to the fluid above the element is P and the pressure below it as P plus dP. So, and then we also have to mark the weight of the fluid. So I'm gonna mark it a little sideways. So then we have the weight, which I'm gonna write as W for the moment. Now, as the entire fluid is in equilibrium, we can balance the forces. So we can write dp multiplied by a equals w. Now we can also write the w in terms of the density. So that is going to be rho times the volume. And the volume of the element is going to be dz multiplied by the area of cross section. So now we can cancel out the areas. Okay, there uh, I, I missed a g as well. So there is a g here as well. So basically what we end up with is dp by dz equal to rho g. So most of you guys may already have this equation memorized. What is what this is is the pressure gradient. So and it increases by a factor of rho g. Now I substituted the, the function of the density. So now as you can see this uh, has become a differential equation. So we can separate similar variables on one side now. Okay, so now we can integrate this expression. So at z equals zero, that is we are at the free surface, the pressure is p atm. At general z, the pressure is p. So this will become natural log of one plus p by p naught. And we have to divide it with a one by p naught. So that will go to the numerator. Okay, guys. So uh, after so after solving this integral, you'll ex you'll get the expression for the pressure as a function of z. Okay, and that was our problem number one. In the second problem, they wanted us to find the mass. So now the mass of the fluid, again, it's going to be uh, as a function of z, is going to be integral of rho d volume, right? So this we can write it as a times integral rho dh. Okay, so um, now the density was rho naught by two divided by one plus p z divided by p naught, right? So we can simply cancel out the p naughts here. So as you can see, this uh, when you divide this with p naught, this will become minus one. So it cancels out with this. So I am just directly writing it here. So it'll be one plus. Okay, so the integral simplifies into this expression. So if we integrate this expression from zero to z, we'll get the function. Okay, so after completing the integration, you uh, you'll get the the variation of the mass of the fluid with the height. Okay. Okay, so now in the third problem, they are saying, let P I Z be the pressure at Z if the liquid were incompressible with density rho naught by two. So this will just simply take our original formula, right? So P I Z would simply be P A T M plus rho G Z. And rho in here is going to be rho naught by two, right? And assuming that P naught is given to be much greater than rho naught G Z, we have to obtain an approximated expression for delta P. So let's write down delta P first. So delta P is going to be, now this condition over here is just to ensure that the exponent over here is very small. So what we can do is uh, write down the expansion for e raised to x. The expansion for e raised to x uh, is one plus x plus x squared divided by two factorial. It goes on till infinity. Okay, so now it depends on what kind of approximation they want. If they want a single order different approximation, one plus x is good. So I'm just taking uh, the second order approximation. So as you guys can see, uh, this one over here will cancel out with this one. Okay, so the rho, this rho naught gz by two will cancel out with this expression. So after expanding, this is the final second order approximation of delta p. So this is what uh, they asked us in the second question. So yeah, that was it for this problem. If you guys have any doubts, you can comment down below. And that's it. Thanks for watching.